Let's see how brown he actually was. Go ahead. As if they burned in a furnace. He said that he was so brown it looked like he burned in a furnace, like a fire. Right? Like a, a, a dark, crispy man. Right. Darker than me. Right. You see what I'm saying? So this image that's been perpetrated and pushed on our people right. is false. And this image right here is the leading image of what they call, or what we would call, so-called white supremacy. Right. You understand? Because the Bible tells us about this. The Bible predicted that this was gonna happen. Right, how you doing? Hey man, how you doing? I see you was over here looking, are you interested? You believe that Christ is a so-called black man? What do you think? Mr. Harry Potter, what do you think? <laughs> Harry Potter don't wanna deal with it, man. See, when the truth comes out, Frank, they don't wanna deal with it. You understand? Okay, go ahead. What's your question? Okay. I don't necessarily So you don't agree with all the stuff, you haven't read the whole thing, that's understandable. Yeah. But you do agree with the Quran, right? Can I ask you one more question, right? As far as what I read from the Quran. Are you okay with beating women or striking women? Right, you said no, right? And I'm not either. Most men, you know what I'm saying, who actually terrorist women are not going to put their hands on women. Can I show you in the Quran what Allah said how women are supposed to be treated when they don't listen? And I just want your, and I just want your opinion. Because there are many different translations, I will admit that. Right? So you read that verse then, Surah 4 and, uh, uh, let's read it though, just for clarity. Let's just read it for clarity. Right? And then I want you to break it down, Frank, since this is the book that you follow. Okay? I'll tell you what I think it means, and then I want you to tell me what it means, to be fair. Okay, hold on. He said that, well, there's cameras, look, there's literally a camera right there. Yeah. We're being, but Frank, you know what I'm saying? You said that you don't, you don't believe in hitting women, right? So there's nothing to be ashamed about a camera seeing you saying that, brother. Well, the thing is, bro, we, we've been here for years. You understand? And this is our platform, but, I'm be, I, I've been very respectful to you. You've been very respectful to me. We're not here to attack or anything like that. We're just here to actually establish truth and have conversations and get people's general ideas of what they're thinking so that our people who are watching who may have the same questions that you have and it can be answered. I just want to read this last thing and, I'm a, and I want your opinion and I'm going to let you go. Is that cool? All right, read. This book is throughout the form, verse 34. Men are in charge of women by right of what Allah has given one over the other. Allah said that men are in charge of women. That actually backs it up with the Bible. The Bible speaks about that in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Right, read. And what they spend for maintenance from their wealth so righteous women are devoutly obedient, guarding in their husband's absence. Right, so if you care about your woman, you know what I'm saying, you're gonna, and you, and you, you, uh, you wanna be over your woman, you make sure that you take care of her. Right, make sure that she has the things that she needs. You understand? That's what Allah is saying. Go ahead. Well, Allah will have them guard, but those wives but from wives. from who you fear arrogant. Right. So if, if a woman is being arrogant, right, if she's not listening, she's pissing you off. Let's see what Allah says you should you should do. First, advise them. Well, the first thing He says is that you should advise them. Right. That backs it up with the Bible. We are to correct our own people. Right. So the first thing we should do is advise them. Right, you're not just gonna let your wife or your woman just go off. You gotta correct her. Go ahead. Then if they persist, forsake them in bed. Right. The second it says to forsake them in bed. Now we do have a little bit, you know what I'm saying, of a confliction here as far as with the Bible, when the word Quran means to recite. See, Allah is saying here that if your woman doesn't listen, forsake her in bed. But the Bible says that, you know what I'm saying, that, that we can't deny sex. How you doing, man? It's good to see you. You gonna come talk to me again? Just, just two seconds, bro. Brand two seconds. Two seconds. I do. I have a question for you. Go home. Last one. Listen. And finally. And finally. Strike them. Strike them. And when you look up this word strike, right, it's literally going into beating. So Allah says that you can beat your women, but, you know, he reads the Quran, and he said that he doesn't believe that, which I hope he doesn't. But this shows that there is a, a, a contradiction between the Quran and the Bible when the word Quran just means to recite. So how do we know that the Quran is not true? 
because it doesn't there are conflictions as far as what is reciting from the Bible. The Bible doesn't say to beat your women, but Allah does. Now, Brandon, right? Oh, I remember his name. See, oh, yeah. see, if I remember your name, Brandon, if I remember your name, I was gonna say. I mean, there's no, there's nothing else to be uh, discussed, though. I do got a quick question, though. I do got one question. It's not for debate. No, it's not a debate. I just got a question, Brandon. I've always been nice to you. I know, I know. Okay, so you can't. I remember your name, brother. I know, I know. I'm saying that's what the scriptures say, though. My channel loves Brandon, man. Right? They be like, they be on the comments. Why Brandon coming back down to downtown Seattle? We liked him. Just real quick, Brandon. I want to ask you one question, and you probably read it before. What did Christ say is the one good thing that we can do in order to get salvation? Keep the commandments. There you go, Brandon. Give Brandon a hand. Keep the commandments. Now, what commandments is he talking about, Brandon? I love the Lord with all that heart, all that soul, all that might, all that strength. The royal law, right? The two major laws. That's what you're talking about, right? And we've already gone over this. You, do you remember what the word love means according to the Bible? Keep his commandments, right? So that means I have to keep the commandments around you, Brandon. You have to but keep the commandments more, around me. There is more than that. There is more to love than that. All right. That's just one scripture that explains love. It's more than that. Though. All right, what? As you tell me. I want to learn first, something today. 1 Corinthians 13. All right, let's go there. Can we go there? Yeah. All right, give me 1 Corinthians 13. Give me give me what Brandon called, right? right? It says charity in the scripture, but charity is love. Right. First, 13 and what? And one, no, he yeah, has one. Start verse four. Start. Verse four. Let's get let's get context. Can we start at verse one and read all the way to four? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, go ahead. This is First Corinthians thirteen, verse one. Uh -huh. Bring it out. I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity. Right. So we want to be able to speak, you know what I'm saying, like the angels speak. But if we don't have charity, like I, I have charity for my own people, Brandon. This is why I stopped. This is why I love to see you when you come up. You understand? Read. I am become. As sounding brass uh -huh. or a tinkling cymbal. Symbol, tinkling cymbal. Symbol. Oh, uh -huh. okay. Verse 2. And though I have the gift of prophecy. So, and though I have the gift of prophecy, this is what we want you to have, Brandon. Because, yes, we got to keep the commandments, right? But there are certain prophecies that has not unfolded yet that are spoken out of the words of Christ. So you believe them, really. And understand all mysteries. Uh -huh and all knowledge, uh -huh. and though I have all faith, right. so that I could remove mountains, uh -huh. and have not charity, right. I am nothing. Right, because if we have faith as a mustard seed, we should be able to move mountains. Right, Shalom, brother, you want to Love you, brother. Mighty brother, you know what I'm saying, from Genesis, you know what I'm saying? So, did you, you agree with that, right? That if you don't have faith in Christ, right, and charity, right, right that it profits nothing. Right, just like faith without works is dead. Charity will be another work. You understand? Me. And though I bestow all my good to feed the poor. Right? Not everybody's poor. This is why we coming out here to feed our people. Right? We're poor physically and we're poor in spirit because we've been fed lies. Read. And though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, I it profited me nothing. It's a lot. Right? I'll read that again. And have not charity, it profited me nothing. Now we're on verse four, the verse that you wanted us to read, Brandon. We got the we got the context, read. Charity suffering long. Right. Charity suffereth long. Go ahead. And it's kind. Right. So I'm being kind to you. I'm showing you an example of charity. I've never been mean to you. And you've never been mean to me. I'm just saying it's more right. than just keeping You know why this is important, and I agree with you. You know why this is important? Because this is what we're going into today. Right. Why, why are the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans in a bad position? Because we don't, we don't show charity amongst each other, which is another form of love. Read. Charity envy it not. Charity haunted not itself. So if we have charity towards one another, we shouldn't have envy towards one another, right? And charity towards one another, we're not going to sit there and puff ourselves up. You understand? We, can, we should be able to build, right, and through the scriptures and see what is right and see what is wrong. Yeah, the meat showing here. The meat, right? Yeah. So you got to be uh, so, up. Are you working on being meek, Brandon? Like I'm working on being meek? Well, it's, uh, it's all the grace of the Lord. Right? So 
if you believe in, in everything that the scriptures say, in, right? In regards uh -huh. to um, love, right? the Lord said, love thine enemies. Said, love thine enemies. Let's deal with that. I'm going to show you what that means. Matthew 5, the side of verse 48. I'm going to show you what that means. But first, do you, do you understand as far as dealing with the Greek, as far as dealing with the Hebrew? Right? The Old Testament was written in the Hebrew. New Testament was written in the Greek. So to get the understanding of these words, you have to know, especially on this verse, this is, this is the Greek word. And I'm going to show you the Greek word for enemy in Matthew 5 and 48. Right? And I want to see if you agree. Okay? One second. This is Matthew chapter 5, verse 48. We're going to get it for him. Right? Yeah, go ahead and read it. This book of Matthew 5, verse 44. But I say unto you, love your enemy. Bless them that curse you. Right. Do good to them that hate you and pray for them which despitefully use you uh -huh. and persecute you. Right. So the most high God has enemies that he has indignation against forever. That's written in prophecy. Right. So it can't be talking about the enemies of the most high God or the enemies of Israelites in this verse. Right? Because look, we're gonna get the word enemy in here. Right? Let's get it. Okay? This is the strong uh, word for enemy, right? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna play it so you can hear it, okay? Right? Ethros. Right, I'm gonna do it again so you can hear it. Okay, Ethros, right? And it says, right, hated, odious, Hateful, hostile, hating, and opposing another, right? A certain enemy, right? The hostile one, right? So this is talking about a certain enemy. The Strong's definition, right, dealing with this, right, is actually going into, you know what I'm saying, passively, right? Actively, right? Hostile, and we've been amongst that amongst our own people. Christ can't be talking about the, you know what I'm saying, the other nations. When he has when he has words that he said that is going to happen, you understand in the Bible. Whenever uh, Christ died on the cross, mm -hmm. he said, "Father, forgive them; they know not what they do." And were they the Israelites? Who were, who were the nationalities of those two people? Romans and Israelites. Now, are were a lot of Israelites? Opposed, was Paul a Roman? Opposed to the Lord. Was Paul a Roman? Yeah, he was a Roman citizen. Right, a Roman citizen. He was an Israelite. But he was an Israelite. You the understand? The centurions pierced the Lord. The Lord's brought forth Pilate. Romans, Edomites. He said Edomites. Yeah. So you think, so let me, let me, let's see, let's get Paul's words. Romans 9 and 13. But oh. start at Romans 9 and so 1 so and then the jump Lord, to 13. The Lord forgave the Israelites and the Gentiles. That's why the Lord said he included all in the sin that he may have mercy upon them. I can show you the meaning of that understanding of Gentiles because you're getting caught up in thinking that Gentiles, that he's talking about the other nations. He's talking about the Israelites because the promises and everything only afford the Israelites. And Paul talks about this. And I know you read this. Oh, yeah, I know. I know, I know. All right, Romans 9 and 1, and then jump to verse 13. And then after that, Let's look at Romans 9 and verse 1. So then after that, go to 23. That's fine. I love that. Bro. I say the truth in Christ. I lie not. Uh -huh. My conscience also bear me witness in the Holy Ghost. So do you agree with the text that Paul, when he's writing in this chapter, Romans chapter 9, that he's speaking the truth in Christ and he doesn't lie? Okay, so read verse 13. Verse 13, as it is written. As it is written in Malachi chapter 1, verses 1 all the way through 4, specifically number 4. Jacob have I loved. The Israelites has he loved. But Esau have I hated. But he said that he hates Esau. Now he said jump to verse 23. But start at verse 21 so that we can get the context of 23. Start at verse 21. This is, but this is verse 21. Uh -huh. Had not the potter power over the clay. So the potter in this context, Brandon, is speaking of the most high God. Right. He has power over the clay. We would just be the clay. We're just vessels that the most high God created. Read. Of the same love to make one vessel unto honor. So he has one vessel that's unto honor, right? He has people that he makes to be vessels of honor. Go ahead. And another unto dishonor. And another unto dishonor. The vessels that's being spoken about specifically is according to prophecy. What was written in Genesis, what was written in Second Edges is dealing with Jacob and Esau, right? Like we just read in verse 13. Read. Verse 22. So it can't be Esau as the vessels, you know what I'm saying, for honor because he just said he hated him in verse 13. Read. I'll let you go. What if God willing to show his wrath and to make his power known 
endure it, endured with much long suffering, the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. So he has vessels that were actually created to be destroyed. He creates nationalities of people to be destroyed just so that prophecy can fulfill. Right, go ahead. Verse 23. Uh -huh. And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, mm -hmm. of the on the vessel of mercy, Slavkin, which he had before prepared unto glory. So most high created nationalities of people, the Israelites specifically in this context, to be vessels of honor, and he created other nationalities of people to be vessels of dishonor, just so that he can raise them up and destroy him to show his power. The same way he did in ancient Egypt, the same way he did in Sodom and Gomorrah, right? He was gonna destroy Nineveh. You remember that? Because Jonah didn't want to listen. They repented. They repented, but can all nations repent? Well, yeah, the Lord said, uh, repentance uh, shall be preached in my name amongst all nations. Repentance okay. are a mission of sins. But mm -hmm. anyway, um, in regards to Romans 9, mm -hmm. it's talking about the children of the promise and the children under the law, or the children of uh, uh, the flesh and the children of um, the spirit. Right. And that's all a symbol to of who the Lord has mercy on and who the Lord is not have mercy on. Okay, let's. In other words, we read this before. Christ. What you read it? Yeah, I know. Can we read it again? No, but that's it. Like I said, that's what Who are the children of the promise, Brandon? The children of faith. The children of faith. Who are the ones that's going to have faith? Is it all nations? Yeah, it is. Okay, so let's just say that all nations have faith it in Christ. Not, it says it's not of the law. Give like me the John law, 7 like the law, faith will be void. Okay, hold on. Because you said something, Brandon. You said that all nations can have faith in Christ. Right, right now, right? Yeah. Okay. This is how they're going to have to do it, though. John 7 38. This is the book of John 7 and verse 38. Uh -huh. He that believeth on me. This is Christ's words. He said that he that believeth on me, as the scriptures have said, no, as what they've heard for Christianity. As the scriptures have said, uh -huh. out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So you have to believe to have faith in Christ. You have to have faith in Christ and believe on him as the scripture has said, Brandon. That's right. Now, Let's see if you have faith in this, Revelation 13. Because this is Christ's words. Some people don't want to see what I'm saying? I know you know the scriptures, Brandon. You need to be up here with us, man. Right? <laughs> Listen to this. I, I want to see it. No matter of fact, give me Revelation 2 and 26. I want to see if Brandon, right, is, is, is really has faith in in Christ, as the scripture says, Revelation 2 and 20, sorry, verse 20, yeah, sorry, verse 26, read all the way to 27. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 2 and verse 26. Uh-huh. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end. So Christ is saying that he that overcomes the temptation, he that overcomes Jacob's trouble that's on its way, Brandon. We're going to have to link up, Brandon. You understand? He that overcomes lies and, and deceit. Go ahead. To him. Will I give power over the nation? Brandon, do you, Christ said that if you overcome, he's going to give that person power over the nations. Yeah. Do you want power over the nations, Brandon? Well, that's those who are going to reign with Christ in his kingdom. Yes or no? Yeah, your name, Brandon. That's, all, that's Revelation 7. That's, then they're drawn out of all nations, kindreds, people. So, Brandon, oh, Revelation 7, we can show you who that yeah. multitude is in kindreds. But that's the Israelites. Going, I mean, going right, but answer my question, Brandon. Don't run. Do you want power over the nations, Brandon? Like Christ said. So that means you want power of the nations, right? That's right. Okay, keep reading. Listen to this. Verse 27. And he shall rule with them, rule them with a rod of iron, mm -hmm. as the vessels of potter shall they be broken to shivers. See that? Do you want to rule over the nations, Brandon, with a rod of iron and beat them to shivers? Yes, sir. That just means complete power. Right, and who? The Lord said all things must be brought under his foot. Right, isn't, isn't the Most High the creator of good and evil though, Brandon? Is he the creator of good and evil? Yes or no? No, well, he, um, he hasn't created evil. When he turns his Give me face Isaiah 45 away, and stuff. When he um, turns his face away, that's when evil is. Hold on, Brandon. Separation. You made a statement. You made a false statement. Separation. You made a false statement, Brandon. And I love you, Separation. Brandon, so I got to correct you on this. Separation. Listen to this. Isaiah 45 and 7. 
This book of Isaiah, the 45, verse 7. Bring it out. I form the light and create darkness. Mm -hmm. I make peace and create evil. I make peace and what? And create evil. evil. Uh -huh. I, the Lord, do all these things. Do you agree with the text that the Lord creates, he makes peace and creates evil and he does all that, these things? That's going into the Lord's judgment. There's so judgments there's, that are good. There's a difference between evil and what, what you would call evil, which would be judgment. Right, and one of the judgments we read is that if you overcome... The Lord judges, definitely like a judge, like a king. But the Lord doesn't create evil. The Lord's given no... Read it again. <laughs> you didn't hear it. Okay, hold on. We're gonna, I'm going to read it one more time, Brandon. I'm going to let you break it down. Yeah. Right? That's not talking about evil in regards to... Transgressing his law. The Lord doesn't create that. Hold on. Does evil. Okay, so if it's not talking about evil transgressing the law, did evil happen to the Israelites for transgressing the laws of God? Yes or no? But that's the Lord's judgment. And that's what you would call So is that righteous judgment? That's judgment. The Lord is not the creator of um, um, evil things. <laughs> it just said it though, Brandon. Man creates evil things. The uh, Lord created all things good and man upright, but they saw. But we but you said you told me to get Romans 9 and 23, ben, uh, uh, Brandon, talking about the vessels. Right? Yeah, that and in true. that it said that he created vessels for honor and created vessels for dishonor. That's right. It goes into his mercy. No, it goes for into judgment. Prophecy. There's a difference between judgment and Real. evil. This book of Proverbs from 16 and verse 4. Bring it out! The Lord has made all these things for himself. Uh-huh. Yea, even the wicked. Yea, even the what? Yea, even, even the, the wicked. wicked. For the day of evil. Did he just say that the Lord created the wicked for the day of evil? Our judgment, yeah. You ran into hell. He agreed. All he right. He's the Bible, yeah. man. He learned from us. But, uh, me, I'll leave it at that. And, uh, yeah, like I said, I mean. So when are we going to have round three, Brandon? This was round two. Well, I can't. Every time we come by, we uh, speak. You know, it's always a debate and stuff. So we're not debating. We're having a discussion, Brandon. Right. right. Scripture say after two or three admonitions, chapter story, you know? But, Brandon, see, I still got, I got hope for you, Brandon. Right? How you doing, I brother? I hope for you. I'll All for, hey, brother, you see yourself in this song real quick? Right. Two seconds. Come talk to me, King. We love you, though, brother. All right? All praise the most high. You got any other questions, Brandon? Because you, 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 you was doing good. But then it kind of went back down into that Christy. It's that cross, Brandon. You're supposed to take that cross off. That's right. You take that cross off, Brandon, you're going to get me. that knowledge that you can't get from college. How are you going to believe in the Messiah and not be a Christian? Because we'll show you what Christian means. Who were the I first know. Christians? Antioch, I know. Okay, so the first century Christians, they were called what? What were they called? The what? what? The first century Give me Acts 13 and 1. No. Right? Give me Acts 13 and 1. You know. Okay? And I'm going to pull it up in the blue letter. Right? You're going to learn so something today, on, Brandon. Do you believe on the Messiah? Yes, of course. I believe on the Messiah. Then would, if you follow him, wouldn't you be a Christian? Right? Yes, we're going to show you what Christian means. Yes. I'm going to show you what Christian yes. means. Right? Because Christianity is not in the Bible. Right? But we're going to show you what Christian means. A lot of terms aren't in the Bible. This book of Acts 13 and verse 1. Bring it up! Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon. That was called nigger. That was called what? That was called nigger. nigger. What does this word nigger mean? Let's figure it out. Here it is. Check this out, Brandon. Right? Look at this, Brandon. You're going to like this, Brandon. Right? I know you've heard this before, Brandon. Right? But we got a refreshing in memory. Right? What does it mean? Let's get the pronunciation. Strong's G, 3526. Nigger. Nigger. That's, what that's in Acts 13 and 1. It means black. A Christian. What is that? Hand. <laughs> Could you read that again? You have, you have, you have black, brown, white. Uh, all colors are going to be saved, and all colors are going to be condemned. So all people that's, are going to. That's Rome's the second chapter. So right. all people are going to be saved, right? Well, give me Luke skin chapter. Color, give me Luke color chapter color one. Skin color don't matter. You said, yeah. well, we're not talking about skin color. That's right. Well, Brandon, Brandon, that's a false statement, Brandon. How are you saying that we're talking about skin color when that. we're promoting this chart? Aren't there many different... Line. Do you know who this guy is, Brandon? Brandon, do you know who this guy is right now, Brandon? I know you know sports. Look at this guy. Who's this guy? Who's this basketball player? Blake Griffin, right? He's from the tribe of Levi. to be an Israelite. Like six years ago, you guys. Well, who, who did you join? Well, what Ezra like camp was you part of? We would like to know, Brandon. You my friend, Brandon. Well, I, 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 I want to know. I, I want to close, close that. 
but the Lord, like, that's an issue. Did you wear long you garments to down to the foot? You have to graduate. They have to graduate? Yeah. Well, guess that's what, Brandon? Um, Here in Genesis, right, we got a door that's open for you, Brandon. Yeah, you that's so right. That you can expound on that knowledge, You have brother. to put on, you have to put on, yeah, how, uh, how, do you, what, how do you say the Lord's name? Yeah, how? You said it. You know, the, the Messiah, how do you say Yeah, how was You need to put on my, how was You need to put him on. But I am, brother. I am. That's, that's, that's what this is missing. So you're saying we're missing your Hamashah, but I showed nothing but love to you, Brandon. Right? Doesn't the Bible say that open rebuke is better than secret love, Brandon? Yeah, but. Uh, give me, Jer give me Jeremiah guys, 2 and 33. You guys are wrong. What? You guys are wrong. How, what am I wrong about, Brandon? Because I'm pulling the scriptures, Brandon. Even when you tell me to pull the scripture, Brandon, I'm reading it. And I'm the one breaking down, and you're not breaking it down, Brandon. I'll give you plenty of opportunity. So, so where you guys don't have faith? I mean, you guys are missing faith, grace. Where's all this coming? Where's the resurrection coming? Where does the we believe the in the death, in? burial, and resurrection of who they call Jesus Christ? That is a commandment. Did you know about that, Brandon? That's you that's in the law Christ. to have. Christ. Do you know that's in the law to have faith in Christ? Yeah, I know. That. Where is it at, Brandon? Can I show you, or do you know? There you go. Give my hand. Okay, so you can't you can't make those false statements. About that's me, right. Man. I mean, I'm, I'm saying that's what you're missing. That's what the, you guys are. Without that, you guys aren't going to get it. You need the. So that's the piece have missing. we been talking about Christ since you've been up here, Brandon? That's right. It's like just like I brought the example out of love and charity in First Corinthians 13. Right. We read. That's the piece. You had to bring out the spiritual. So, Brandon, how do I show how it for you? Power. For you, Brandon, if, if I was to make you a believer, right, how would you want me to love you, Brandon, according to what you learned in the scriptures? You have to do it as you would men unto you. All right, I'm going to show you. Give me verse John, and that's why chapter I 5, the start of verse you. 2. See, this is love me correcting you. Okay, okay, so I heard your answer, Brandon. I'm going to give you my answer. I'm, no, I just want to, I'm going to show you how that the Most High God told me to love you, Brandon. I want to see if you agree with the words of the Most High God. First John chapter 5, verse 2. This is looking First John chapter 5, verse 2. Uh, Bring it out. By this we know that we love the children of God. So by this I know that I love you, Brandon, because whether you agree or not, you are an Israelite. You're a child of God, right? This is how I know that I love you, Brandon Reed. When we love God uh -huh. and keep his commandments. So when we love God and keep his commandments. See, my brothers came all the way down here from Portland, right? See, my brothers came from Portland because they love you, Brandon. Right? They oh, like, man, this is your family, you Brandon. Love, you know I mean, you do have to love me. You have to love God first. That's the first thing. Well, 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 we understand that. We understand that, Brandon. Kwame Asherala! Kwame Asherala. Yeah, I mean, that's it. I mean, we, we, that's why, I mean, that's it. You ain't gonna agree with I gotta say. Brandon, you ain't gonna agree with I gotta say. Brandon, read it one more time. I, I wanna see if you agree. Last point, Brandon. Brandon, Brandon. 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 By this we know that we love the children of God. So this is how I know that I love you, Brandon. Read. When we love God, right. and, and I love God, I have the fear of God. Right? Right? How do I know that I have the fear of God? How that I know that I love Brandon when we love God and what? And keep his commandments. And do what? And, and keep, keep his, his commandments. commandments. So, Brandon, I'm going to keep the commandments around you every single time you see me. And guess what, Brandon? If you caught me slipping, Brandon, and you caught me breaking a commandment, would you correct me? Give me Leviticus 19.17. Would you correct me, Brandon? You can only do that with grace. Oh, Brandon. Hold on. Yeah, not, okay, Brandon, what if I was getting ready to cross the street, Brandon? And that big Seattle bus is getting ready to come by. I would have to. I would have to. Uh, you would say, you would say, Zamron, get off the street, right? Which I'm doing now. See, thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. I don't hate you, Brandon. Why are you trying to tell me to get off the street? And all we out here doing is just reading the Bible. Brandon, see, you hate me. Huh? I'm trying to put you guys in the right way. That Brandon, we trying to get you to that right path. You trying to go see Brandon, you on that wide path. Right. We gotta get you on the straight path. Keep reading. Fuck it. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor, uh -huh. and not suffer sin upon him. Right, so we have to, we, okay. 
So Brandon, I have to rebuke you when you make false statements on the Most High God, and we're pulling it out from the Bible to show you what it's actually saying. Because I love you, brother. If I don't, then I will just let you go and hold signs with these guys that don't even read the Bible. You know why, Brandon? Because you're an Israelite, Brandon. That's right. And we have to be a light to our people hey, now, the Lord, Brandon. The Lord said, the Lord said, we'll call servants by another name. Give me Revelation. He told the Israelites that they'll leave their name for a curse. He said, call a servant. Give me Revelation 13. Call it verse 10. Hold on. Last question, Brandon. I promise. Last question, Brandon. I can talk to Brandon all day. He don't like talking to me, though. <laughs> Look at Romans 13 and verse 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go. So he shall go. He that talk. He that leadeth into captivity huh? shall go into captivity. I said that he that leads a nation of people into slavery shall go into slavery. Go ahead. He that killed with the sword must be killed with the sword. Uh -huh. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. So do you strive to be a saint, Brandon? Yeah. Okay. Who are the saints according to the Bible? Well, Revelation says, whoever believes in the Lord of all kindreds. You Revelation 14 and 12. All right, let's 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 see. Let's find out what Christ says who the saints are. Revelation 14, 12. This book of Revelation chapter 14 and verse 12. Uh -huh. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters. 14 and 12. Oh, slide. First thing, this book of Revelation 14 and verse 12. Slide. Awesome. Here. here is the patience of the saint. Here is the patience of the saint. Brandon said that I am a saint and I strive to be a saint just like I'm striving to be a saint. Right? So there's patience that these saints have. Right? Here's the patience of the saint. Here are they that keep the commandments of God. So the saints are those who keep the commandments of God, Brandon. Who received the commandments? Who were the commandments given to? According to God. Uh, uh, the old covenant the Israelites, the new covenant is for all nations, peoples, peoples, and tongues. Okay, Psalms 147, 19 to 20 first, says it was for the Israelites. But you mentioned old yeah, covenant Israel, and new covenant. Is Israel, then is Israel the most high. So, all Israel, who are Israel. Shalom, Shalom, my mighty brother Maccabees. See, this is another brother I want you to meet, Brandon. Right? See, this brother loves, nobody loves our people more than Maccabees. You understand? Right? Do you love our brother Brandon Maccabees? Man, you see that? So, Brandon, Brandon. So, Brandon, real quick, right? Do you think that we're in the new covenant? Because you mentioned the new covenant. It's an honest question. Well, we know that Christ is the mediator, but are we in the new covenant right now? Yeah. Okay. Give me. I, will, I want Jeremiah, but go, go to Hebrews chapter 8. Give me Hebrews chapter 8, start of verse 13. Right? And could you give me Jeremiah chapter 31 and start at verse 31? We're going to read about this new covenant. Right? And I want you, and I, this is the last question, I promise. But I, I'll talk to you all day, Brandon. Because I like conversating with you. You know why, Brandon? I'll give you this. Out of the Christian apologists that be walking around here, you don't run away, Brandon. I'll give you that. You got a question? Uh huh. Hold on, we're going to answer his question first, right? Because you're going into something else. I, but I want to hear what you're going to say. But hold on, listen to this, Brandon. I want to see if you agree. Okay, no problem. We're going to go to the New Testament, okay? Hebrews 8, starting verse. Uh, Start at verse 8, read all the way to 13. This no, start at verse 7. Look at Hebrews 8 and verse 7. Uh -huh. For if that first covenant had been faultless, uh -huh. then should no place have been sought for the second. Right. Our, our people as Israelites, you know what I'm saying, they disobeyed the covenant, disobeyed the laws, which is why we went into slavery, right, and had to deal with all these curses, right? We agree with that. Read. For finding fault with them. He saith, Behold, the days come. Behold what? Behold, the days come. So behold, the days come. We're going to find out if these days have came already or if this is still future prophecy. Read. Saith the Lord, uh -huh. when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel uh -huh. and with the house of Judah. No, with all nations. And with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. The southern kingdom and the northern kingdom. Okay. That's who the new covenant is going to be made for. Paul even backs that up in Romans 9. Read. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, uh -huh. because they continue not in my covenant, 
I regarded them not, saith the Lord. So he said, it's not going to be like the old covenant as the time that I took them out of the hands, uh, out of the land of Egypt. Right? Because they didn't, they didn't even regard the commandments. Right. You understand? Right. But it, this next verse, as we keep reading, is going to break down, right, what this new covenant actually looks like. Read. For this is the covenant that I will make with, with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, uh -huh. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their laws in their mind and write them in their hearts. So he said that those who are in the new covenant, they're going to be physically in tune right. to not sin because they're going to have the laws in their minds and in their hearts. Read. And I will be to them a God uh -huh. and they shall be to me a people. Right. And they shall not teach every man. And they shall not what? And they shall not teach every man. We are clearly teaching, Brandon. There are clearly people's teaching right now. Right? And do you have the laws? Do you feel like you have the laws in your heart, Brandon? And in your mind? Yeah, but you still sin you're in uh, the flesh. No. It's, it's a certain, um, it's a certain, uh, certain gradation. Okay, so you said you feel it's like not, you have the laws be, in your it's mind. It's not going to be complete until the resurrection. That's when the completeness is going to come. So, but for now, it's just a... Uh, okay, let's continue reading. I got what you're saying. Huh? His neighbor and every man his brother saying, Know the Lord for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. And their iniquity, iniquities would I not remember. I'm not going to remember it anymore. How is that? That's your Christ. So are you saying that the are you saying that God's chosen people are going to be sinning in the kingdom of heaven? All right. So how is the Lord not going to remember their sins anymore? Because how, now, how is that playing the because Christ has now come back and redeemed the children of Israel. And brought them in the land where they belong to be rulers. Christ is the propitiation. He's a sacrifice for that. Well, didn't it say, well, Brandon, you said that you wanted power over the nations, Brandon. By the shedding of blood. According to Revelation. By the shedding of blood, the covenant comes into force. Power that happened on the cross. We, under, we understand that, Brandon. Right? But has this been That's fulfilled it. yet when it says the days come? That's it. Right? Give me Jeremiah 31 and 31. It's the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verse 31. Bring it out. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel uh -huh. and with the house of Judah. Uh -huh. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers right. in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband to them, saith the Lord. Right. Verse 33. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, after say, what? After those days, uh -huh. saith the Lord. Say the Lord. Hold that real quick. Rather, uh, Hebrews, 3, Hebrews 8 13. Listen to this, Brandon. Look at Hebrews 8 verse 13. Uh -huh. And that he saith, a new covenant he had made first old. Now that which decay and wax is old is ready to vanish it's away. What? Is ready to vanish away. It said that is ready to vanish away. The old covenant. Hold on, we're going to deal with you, Bartholomew. One second. Right? It says that it's ready to vanish away, Brandon. That means it hasn't, it's, not, it's ready. It hasn't happened yet, Brandon. So guess what, Brandon? You, you, I love you, but you got to keep the laws of God. Was Jesus a screamer? Hold on, was Jesus on a bike? Jesus actually was an odd. But if you're going to, you know give me Isaiah 58 and 1. Right, right. Give me Isaiah, just give me Isaiah 58 and 1. Nobody speak to him. Give me Isaiah 58 and 1. We're going to answer your question with scripture. Read. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 58 and verse 1. Oh, don't just like an Edomite, they run away when the Bible comes out. Get her! 28 and 1. The wicked flee. The wicked flee. It's devils like that that got our people like Brandon, man, holding on to the so-called white man. Shook and not man. understanding their heritage and who they truly are. Proverbs 28 and 1. This book of Proverbs 28 verse 1. The wicked flee. With no man pursuing. And we clearly seen that he, well, nobody, he, we didn't ask for him to come up here. Right. He kind of interrupted our nice dialogue, discussion, and conversation with our dear brother Brandon. Esau. We're still going to be on your head, Brandon, because we love you. That's you right. understand? That's love. Right? That's love, man. Right? And we ain't talking about the Kirk Franklin song either. That's right. That's right. That's the book of Isaiah, chapter 58, and verse 1. Get out. Cry aloud. No, be quiet. Cry aloud! Why are you on a mic? Cry aloud! Spare not! Lift up thy voice like a trumpet! 
and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sin. This is how you know that blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are the Israelites the Bible speaks of. That's right. Right? Because a lot of us don't even listen to our own parents until our parents start raising their voices. That's right. Right? So we got to come out. How you doing, brother? Hey, hey, real quick. Two seconds. What's your name, man? Charles? Hey, Charles, you, you might be an Israelite, man. Probably from the tribe of Judah. And we love you, Charles. 